Good morning, everyone. Uh, so today we are going to start a new chapter, that is chapter seven, state government. Now in this uh, chapter, number of portions have been deleted, so I'm only covering those which have not been deleted in this video. In the next two, three videos, we all we will also look at some other parts. So high court is not deleted. This is there in your syllabus. So today we are going to cover high court in detail. Now high court. So Article 214. High courts. Okay. Article 214 says that every state should have a high court. So there is an article in the constitution which is Article 215. Actually, so it states. Okay, just a second. Yeah. So Article uh, says that every state should have a high court. <laughs> every state should have a high court. But two or more states. Now, the two or more states can have a one high court. Like Punjab and Haryana, they have a one high court. Okay, so one it says that every state should have a high court, but it also says that two or more state can have a common high court. Common means see Punjab and Haryana are there. Now they have only one high court. So their high court is in Chandigarh. Okay, so it also says that two or more states can have a single high court. Now in India there are around 28 states and seven, eight to nine union territories. Okay. But the high courts are around 24 to 26. Why? Because many states in our country have a common high court. Okay. Now, the judges of high court as well as the chief, uh, chief justice are appointed by president. Okay. You have to remember that they are appointed by president. Now, when we look at the qualification, now, see, we have covered Supreme Court. Similarly, now we are covering High Court. Now, you have to remember the structure that first you have Supreme Court, okay, then Supreme Court is the highest court, Apex Court, then you have High Court, and then you have Lower Courts. So, Lower Court is the lowest, High Court is above the uh, Lower Court, and Supreme Court is above all the courts. So, this is the structure. We have already covered Supreme Court. Now we are going, going to cover High Court. Now the functions of Supreme Court and High Court are almost similar. Almost. Now, uh, qualification. So if a person wants to be appointed, if he want to be a member of High Court, or uh, like uh, means if he want to be a judge of a High Court or a Chief Justice of High Court, he should be citizen of India. Second, should have been in judicial post for 10 years. So he should have been a judge magistrate of a uh, uh, like he should be a, he should be a judge or a magistrate for a period of 10 years if he is a judge or a magistrate for a period of 10 years he can become he can become the mem uh, he can become the judge of high court he can also become the judge of supreme court then should have been an advocate of high court for 10 years that person so there are lawyers there are advocates if a person who is an advocate of high court for a period of 10 years, he can become a judge of high court. He can also become a judge of Supreme Court. So these are the qualifications. After qualifications, we have retirement. Now the judge, the retirement age of a judge of high court or a chief justice of high court is 62 years. And it is not that, uh, that if a person has retired, that he can only vacate his office by retire, when he retires. But a judge of high court, a judge of supreme court or a chief justice of high court or supreme court can resign from their post and that resignation is given to president. Third, they can also be removed from their office. They can be removed by the process of impeachment. Now, I have told that impeachment means ki Pradhan, uh, like Rashtrapati, Uprashtrapati, ya supreme court and high court ke judges ko government remove kar sakti hai. and government means Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. So, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha can remove President, Vice President, Judges of Supreme Court, High Court and Chief Justice of Supreme Court and High Court. Now, they can be removed through the process of impeachment. Okay. So, this impeachment is passed by special majority. Now, after doing this, now, in order to ensure that, that High Court is independent. So, independent means there is no interference. Okay, there is no interference in the working of judiciary. So certain provisions have been made so that it, so that the high court can be independent. 
So what are those? One is special procedure for appointment. We know that it is uh, that the judge of high court, if a person has to, is to be appointed as a judge of high court, who takes the decision? The chief justice of the high court, the chief justice of India, they nominate the names to the president. Second is fixed tenure. Fixed tenure means if a person has become the judge of high court or a judge of supreme court, he will remain in office until he retires. So there is a fixed tenure. Second is retired judges of high court cannot practice in the court where he served. Suppose there is a judge in the high court of Rajasthan. After he retires, he cannot practice as an advocate in Rajasthan high court. He can do so in other high court where he has not served as a judge. So he can serve, uh, he can represent in uh, himself uh, as an advocate, he can uh, work as an advocate in High Court of Gujarat in case if he has not served there as a judge. Okay. Now fourth is independent from executive. Because we know that the, uh, clearly the constitution has demarcated the roles and functioning of legislative, executive and judiciary. Now, now next comes an important thing which is the power and function of High Court. Now this I have already covered in Supreme Court because I, at that time I told you that almost they are same. So still we will have a look. you have one you have original jurisdiction then you have Appellate jurisdiction. Then you have writ jurisdiction. Then you have court of record. So number of uh, jurisdiction, or you can say power of supreme court uh, or the high courts are there. Then you have administrative power and power of judicial level. Now we are going to look all of these in detail. Now original jurisdiction means no other court can hear such dispute. Only the High Court or the Supreme Court can hear such matter. Example can be issues in or disputes now in case if there is a dispute in case of revenue collection this case can only be heard by the High Court. No other court can hear such dispute. That is mean by original jurisdiction. Second is appellate. Appellate means can hear a case by way of appeal. Appeal. Okay. Which means that if you are not satisfied with the judgment of a lower court, you can apply you can appeal to the high court. Similarly, you can appeal also to the supreme court. So, appellate jurisdiction means court will hear your case by way of appeal. Second is writ jurisdiction. Now, in writ jurisdiction, you have to remember article 226. Now, writ means when your fundamental rights are violated. I have explained about the fundamental rights and the writ jurisdiction in the video of supreme court. Now, writ jurisdiction means if your fundamental right is violated, you have the right to directly go to Supreme Court or directly go to High Court. 
for enforcement of your fundamental right, fundamental right. And Supreme Court or a High Court can issue five kind of writs, which is habeas corpus, mandamus, prohibition, etc. So five writs are there which Supreme Court will enforce. Now High Court has the power under Article 226. High Court has the power to issue writ under Article 226, whereas Supreme Court has the power to issue writ under Article 32. Then comes Court of Record. Court of Record means every case which is heard, okay, uh, so all the files, first is, just remember, any decision which a High Court or a Supreme Court gives can be used when a similar kind of case is uh, being filed. Suppose, so it means that a judgment which has been given by a High Court or a Supreme Court in any case will, we should have, we should, should have been, should, uh, like, should be referred. Suppose if a murder case has happened 20 years back and at that time High Court has given some judgment and presently also similar case has been filed which is similar to the case which was filed 20 years back in High Court of a murder. At that time what judgment High Court gave in that case will also have influence on the judgment which the High Court or a particular court will give today. Okay, so the lawyers will refer to that course and will say that 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 particular case happened, similar kind of case happened and in that case so and so happened, in this case also so and so is happening. So this case should be referred. So first thing is court of record which is a pecuniary jurisdiction. We also call it as pecuniary jurisdiction. Second thing is contempt of court. So first yoga, uh, pecuniary jurisdiction, second is Not actually pecuniary jurisdiction. Uh, court of record. So, whatever judgment a high court has given can be used as a proof. If uh, can be actually referred, uh, can be referred by the concerned lawyer. Will be referred. Will be given to the judge that similarly similar case happened. You should also give similar judgment. So basically, you are referring to such cases. Second is contempt of court. If someone is violating. Uh, if, if he is not following the orders of High Court or Supreme Court or if someone is disobeying the court or criticizing the courts etc. then the court can punish that person. So a High Court can punish a person against uh, under contempt of court. Then come administrative power like some administrative decisions which they take and then comes power of judicial review. Power of judicial review means that in case if a government has bring any law Okay, then if, a, uh, if the particular person has bring, uh, has, suppose if the government has uh, brought any law, okay, now if that particular law has been there, now if it is violating some fundamental right etc, then the person can go to high court. Now when they go to high court, Supreme Court do this, uh, Supreme Court or high court go for judicial review. Judicial review means court checks it, court checks the law, whether it is uh, right or not, in case if it is not fit, if, it's, if, it, if it is not good, suppose if it is not as per the constitution, the court has right to say that, that the particular uh, bill ceases to exist, which means that the particular bill is not right, we are questioning that bill. So judicial review is very important. Now this power is available both to Supreme Court and High Court. With this, we are done with this chapter. Thank you.